Hey guys, today we're going to check out the ASRock P67 Fatality motherboard and we're going to see exactly how high we can overclock our 2600K Core i7 processor. The Core i7 2600Ks are capable of hitting and exceeding 5 gigahertz. So we're going to go ahead and see exactly what we can do. A little spoiler, we can hit 5 gigahertz. However, it does come at a terrible, terrible price. I will go ahead and cover this for you, but first I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what settings to start off with on the Fatality motherboard, so this way you don't go through a lot of the toil that I had to do before figuring it out. With the help of some forums, I was able to figure out a few settings that need to be disabled or enabled to make sure I can overclock this processor properly. I'm going to go ahead and show those to you now, so this way you guys don't have to go through all of that. If you'd like to check out the forums yourself, they will be in the description. first thing you'll notice about the BIOS is that this is not your typical BIOS. ASRock has opted for the UEFI style BIOS. Uh, this means it runs more like Windows and less like the typical BIOS that most of us are used to. Besides looking really, really cool, it really doesn't give you much else. This BIOS obviously favors the Fatality background, which is all black and red, which works for me, which is kind of the theme that my computer goes for. Besides that, it's basically your normal stuff. You have your main section, which goes over your basic overlay of the unit. You have your OC tweaker, which is key for what we're trying to do. Your advanced, which covers most of your advanced options, which we will also cover here in a little bit. Hardware monitor, which covers your temperatures, your fan speeds, and overall health of the computer. Boot, which you get to select your boot devices and their priorities, security, you can set up BIOS passwords, and exit, which you can load defaults and save an exit. Alright, so back on to advanced. This is where you're going to want to start. There are a few things under the advanced tab that you must disable before you can even bother overclocking. This was one of the things that took me forever to figure out. Alright, so under the advanced tab, you're going to want to go under the CPU configuration. Under CPU configuration, you're going to want to disable C1E the C3 state support, C6 state support, package C state support, and CPU thermal throttling. Once these are all disabled, go back to the OC tweaker screen. Under the OC tweaker screen, you're going to want to go ahead and go on down to CPU ratio setting and set that to manual. You have to leave Intel speed step technology on on this motherboard to overclock it at all. Otherwise your overclocks just revert back down to 3.4 gigahertz. Under OC Tweaker, make sure Intel PPL overvoltage is enabled. Make sure you disable spread spectrum. Make sure you set the turbo boost power limits to about 180 and 140. You can go higher or lower on this. Make sure you set CPU ratio setting to manual. This one is key. Make sure the CPU load line calibration level is set to either one or two. One will overvolt, so I usually recommend going with two. Also, go ahead to your CPU PPL voltage because you can actually lower this, and this will help prevent a little bit of heat, and the computer will still run just fine. So lower that to 1.709. Under the DRAM settings, you can go ahead and change it to whatever you wish. Um, it comes with preset settings, either DDR3 1066, 1333, 1600, 1866, or 2133. It's a little weird that they skipped DDR3 2000, but since I don't have that, I really don't mind. I do have DDR3 1600, but I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1333. Now we can go ahead and start overclocking. We are not going to touch the base clock. This is kind of dangerous on these motherboards and on these processors we're gonna go ahead and just change the multiplier and go from there. You can change the base clock if you'd like, but you're not gonna get much more than five or six megahertz absolute maximum. I tested this board at 30 times multiplier and was only able to get it up to 105.6 megahertz. This really doesn't help out a whole lot and it does take up a bunch of juice and make the computer very unstable. It's best to just go ahead and overclock using the multipliers and leaving it at 100 megahertz. Now by tweaking the voltage, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we were able to do. As you can see, I was able to hit 5 GHz. 
However, at the cost of having to go all the way up to 1.525 volts. This means that my computer is generating a ridiculous amount of heat. To demonstrate this, I have a video coming up of the same processor running at 1.520 voltage, and you'll see how fast it goes ahead and hits 80 degrees Celsius. Bear in mind, this is also running a Corsair H70 water cooling kit, which is better than any air cooler out there. You are going to need an exotic water cooling kit to stay at 5 gigahertz on the P67 platform. Check this out. It takes me only 30 seconds to hit 80 degrees Celsius while running at 1.520 voltage. Although I'd love to run this platform at 5 gigahertz, without investing heavily in water cooling or even phase change cooling equipment, there is no possible way that's going to happen. As some of you have asked, here's the ASRock Fatality P67 in its new home. Although 5 GHz is out of reach, I can run the unit at 4.8 GHz at acceptable levels. It does run hot, but it's reasonably acceptable. Most of the time, I run it at 4.5 GHz, and that runs perfectly fine in between 35 and 55 degrees Celsius.